I, look, I, having grown up in a city that was segregated, having been in the civil rights movement, the women's movement, and now in the Do Nothing Congress, which has now been captured uh, by people who want to do a lot to people, uh, and especially in, in, in the city I represent, uh, I, I, the, the, the greatest, uh, the, the, the worst reaction uh, we could have to the new administration is hopelessness, and yet I see that all around me. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't raise the fight in you right. mm -hmm. to see Jeff right. Sessions mm -hmm. appointed mm -hmm. Attorney General of the United mm -hmm. States, then you are brain dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the notion of, of hope is a kind of passive emotion mm -hmm. that I have never had. It is the fight emotion, it seems to me, that ought to spring from you when you see and hear the emergence of a now quite outspoken white movement mm -hmm. where they're essentially making the same arguments we made in terms of equality, now in terms of sheer whiteness. So, so if, 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 if you're feeling hopeless, you got the wrong emotion going for you. <laughs> Very quickly, Mike. Um, look, Donald Trump if it turns out to be true that he is the president, and he is, uh, then... <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> yeah, right. Still holding out. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Get that damn recount going. <laughs> so, uh, so the thing is, is that, look, the hope is that Donald Trump turns out to be what people said he was, that he's not really, quote, a right-wing ideologue. The problem is he's drawing people around him who are. You've got an avowed white nationalist as his chief strategist. Mm -hmm. You've got a Jeff Sessions who's problematic. So what we have to do is do what Howard Thurman said. Howard Thurman, the great black mystic, said, refuse to reduce your life to the event of your experience right now. Our slave foreparents, he said, look forward to a day they couldn't even imagine, but they imagined it anyhow. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is to say, my pastor said, we have already come to what we've come to, through what we've come to. <laughs> we've been here before. This is not the first time. We can overcome. We have to remember what we did before. And when we do that, we don't give in to hopelessness. We challenge this with every fiber of our being. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dana? <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely going to continue the fight motif. Um, Sherilyn Eiffel gave a speech, and she was sitting at Thurgood Marshall's desk, and she said, like you did, we have been here before. Mm -hmm. And every time that we have fought in unity, we have won. Yeah. So it's like we get a reset and a, re a do-over. I look at this film, and I am inspired when I see how far we have come and what odds we overcame, and I feel like I can do it again, mm -hmm. right? I look at this film, and I look at the new resources that are at our disposal that weren't at our disposal before, right, and yeah. I know that the, the, the bar has moved. I know that yeah. racism has changed. Mm -hmm. It has morphed. It is no longer just segregation. It is implicit and unconscious and unintentional, all kinds of things that are complicated. But look at what's happening up here. The resources are up to the task. And so I would say we've been here before, and we will do it again, but we will do it better. We'll take more people with us. We won't make the mistakes that we made before. But I feel ready for the fight. Uh, Thank you. you know, it's a, and don't forget the other part of the question, the advice to the president, well, as it relates to black people. Yeah, my, my advice to President like Watch Trump your is, back. Is, yeah, be careful. <laughs> Seriously. Be careful. My, my advice to President like Trump. And that's not, that's not a threat. It's just a, Oh, not a to, physical to, threat. To, no, just be careful of, of, of over thinking the world that you think you're inheriting, right? You, you, know, you have to be much clearer on the world that you're actually entering into. You can surround yourself with a bunch of sort of myopic people who are going to tell you what you want to hear or pander to who you think got you into that office, but you really have to understand the terrain of the world. And I think he got that in his first encounter with, with President Obama in, in, that, in that first meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I agree with the panel here. If, you know, a lot of young people are really upset and, and yeah. distraught out of this. I've had more young people crying in my office hours this week than I did during 9-11, and I taught class on the day of 9-11. Yeah. And so th this is a tremendously traumatic thing for them, but I, I tell them two things. Number one, remember how you felt on 11-9. Like, remember how you felt when you first saw this result. Remember that feeling. Embrace it. You know why? Because that's how I feel every day when I wake up. I feel that way every day when I wake up. The anguish that you feel, the dissonance from, from society, the, the sort of anguish about people of color, women and trans folks and all the folks who are vulnerable. That's how I feel every day when I wake up. Mm -hmm. So remember how you felt on that day, and you got to carry that with you. And the second thing I say is, look, now you can't leave. Right? <laughs> all, all this talk, people want to leave. They want to go to another. Are you crazy? Where are you, you going to go? Where are you going to go? Not only, but I, listen, listen. 
My ancestors built this country. They right. built that White House. They That's built right. the roads. They built the bridges. They literally built it. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> right? We're not going anywhere. So I'm, I'm hopeful that folks can be em em empathetic about how they felt on that day, right? And, and, and carry that with them forward as we continue to do the work that we got to do. Follow up. Thanks. Um, <laughs> only uh, half, the, half the school children in the US now are white. Um, the election was about race, it was about other things too, but the education gap among whites um, <coughs> disappears entirely if you control for the racial attitudes of the whites. So I think if you kind of look at it statistically, um, and this is a very short quote, uh, again from Baldwin, his letter to his nephew on the, on the emancipation is great. He said, the danger in the minds of wo most white Americans is the loss of their identity. The black man has functioned in the white man's world as a fixed star, mm. as an immovable pillar, and as he moves out of his place, heaven and earth are shaken out of their foundations. Mm. If we think that, if we, uh, and here I think I can authentically speak as someone who's both a new American and white, white racism has to be fought by whites. Uh, and so I think there's a huge responsibility among whites not to sort of run silent and think it is somehow the responsibility of black and Latino Americans to fight white racism. I just want to thank all of you, and I want to close by saying that I'm, I'm hopeful, uh, I, not least because um, I was talking to a group of students uh, just the day after the uh, election, and they were expressing angst and anxiety and, and fear. And I told them uh, what uh, we shared at Gwen Eiffel's uh, funeral the other day. Uh, she grew up in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, as did I. And we were taught that our history is our armor. And that is why I, I shared that with the young people. And that is why I readily agree to do anything Skip Gates asked me to do in relationship to this series because this series is a part of our armor and it's armor for black people, it's armor for white people because our fight was not a fight by black people alone. White people died for us. And so it's a fight for all of us. I agree with you on the fact that white people talk to white people, sure. But this is, a, this is a job for all of us, and we have our armor, and we can march forward till victory is won. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn, and everyone at Brookings for generously hosting this evening. Uh, the conversation, as always with Skip, has been stimulating, and it's a great example of the fact that both of our missions, uh, public broadcasting and, we, and Brookings, really align on evenings like tonight. WIDA is the flagship station in Washington, D.C., and as such, we have a very special civic responsibility to, to the to nation to explain what is happening in, we, in Washington. And for those of us who have been around forever, it's hard for us to understand, and yet we really understand how especially younger people are taking current events as a shock to their system. They haven't lived as long as we have and through as many battles as we have. So it's all new to them, and their naivete sometimes is refreshing and energizing, but now it's not helping them as a coping mechanism. So through the PBS NewsHour, through Washington Week, and through partnering with other filmmakers, we're trying to explain not only America's history, but our present. Um, so tonight's uh, conversation, film, and panel have underscored the timeliness, of course, of this amazing project created by Skip, as if he knew what was going to happen. The timing was impeccable, as always. I've long admired Skip's scholarship and leadership as a public intellectual, because that is who he is. He's a filmmaker, thought leader. He always expands our understanding of where we are with race in America. So thank you panelists very much for coming. We appreciate all of your insights. It was especially electric tonight. We really appreciate that. 
And I want to tell our audience that I hope that you will watch part two tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on WIDA 26. So if you missed part one, you can watch it now on pbs.org slash blackamerica. The series will also be rebroadcast, the entire series, all four hours, on Sunday, November 27th, starting at 2 o'clock. So as the relatives leave, relatives leave, you shut the door quietly and enjoy the next four hours <laughs> uh, all for yourselves. I'm happy to announce that by the end of November, this series will have aired 4,000 se separate times in broadcasts through public broadcasting stations all across the country. That's just in this month.